Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In the previous video, we discussed the different ways how we can make the structural formulae of organic compounds. So the structural, the different ways in which we structurally represent organic compounds in order to get a little practice, we are going to do these salt examples in order to solidify how uh, the how, what how to write down these formulae in different ways. So come straight to the first question. This is question 12.4. You have to expand each of the following condensed formulae to their complete structural formulas. You remember we had the Lewis structures initially, then we had the expanded uh, or complete formula, then we had the condensed structural formula, and then the bond line notation. So what do we have here? We have the condensed formulae and they are expecting us to convert them into the expanded form, that is to give the details of every bond. Let's do it. This is the first compound and this is the second compound. So what we're going to do is as we go we, uh, with every carbon, we'll first be making the carbon chain and then be adding whatever other atoms are there. So A, let's solve A. You have carbon with three hydrogens. So the three hydrogens come here. Carbon has two hydrogens. Carbon combines with oxygen. It's always a double bond. This carbon combines with the next carbon which has which is attached to two other hydrogens and a carbon which is attached to three other hydrogens. It's very easy to write down these formulae. Every carbon should be forming four bonds. Carbon forms single bonds. The first bonds are always single bonds with hydrogen. With hydrogen it is always single. But between two carbons it can be a single bond, double bond or a triple bond depending on whether the compound is an alkane, alkene or alkyne. With oxygen, usually the bond is a double bond if oxygen is directly attached to the carbon. But if next to oxygen there is, let us say, a hydrogen like an alcoholic group OH, then oxygen forms two bonds. It may form one bond with carbon and the other with hydrogen. So if you just have a little idea of how the bonding takes place, how many bonds is oxygen going to form, you would uh, have, you would get an idea how to write down the structural formula also. Let us come to the second compound now, compound B. You have carbon attached to three hydrogens. So we write the three hydrogens like this. The second carbon is attached to one hydrogen and forms a double bond with the next carbon, which also is attached to a hydrogen. Now look, whenever you have a double bond, every carbon should be forming four bonds. So if there is a double bond, third bond, fourth bond, just by confirming that carbon is forming four bonds also, you would know whether you're going right in your structure or not. So now carbon forms a double bond here with CH and then you have CH2 three times. So you have carbon, H, H, C, H, H. C H H. It is thrice and CH3. This is the terminal carbon, therefore it has three hydrogens. These were not terminal, therefore these three carbons were in the chain and therefore we just wrote them in the chain and in the condensed formula you can put a bracket and put the number of times it is being repeated. So it was CH2 3. So expand each of the following condensed formulas to their complete structural formulae. We have done this for both these compounds. Now the next question is, question 12.5, for each of the following compounds write a condensed formula and also their bond line formula. Now these are already condensed formulae but you have to further condense them and write their, also write their bond line formula. So the first one, let's have a look here. Here what do we see? OH is attached to this carbon, that is understandable. and um, write a condensed formula and also their bond line formula. The CH2 is being repeated how many times? One, two, three times. And to this carbon, OH is attached. So we'll write for A, we'll write OH, CH2, thrice, CH, CH3, CH, and CH3 whole twice. 
So this was the condensed formula. Let us now write the next, that is the bond line formula for the sink. So for bond line formula, you have to write, you need not write the carbons and hydrogens, you just use lines. The joints are represent carbons in the middle of the chain. The end of the line represents a methyl group. If anything else is attached, we have to write that group. For example, to this terminal carbon, you have the terminal carbon here. Let us first write it with the structure, you know. You have CH2. And to this terminal carbon, OH is attached. So we'll write the OH here, right? Then CH2 is three times. So CH2, CH2 is thrice. Then you have CH. And to this CH, CH3 is attached, right? Then you have CH here. And you have CH3 and a CH3 here. Or this CH3 could be represented instead of writing it this way, you could show that this carbon has a CH3 as a branch too. So now that you've got the basic layout, you have to remove the carbons and hydrogens and make the rest of the structure. So you have OH here. The tip is going to, this is CH2, 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 CH. So here you have CH3 automatically. CH and there's a CH3 here and CH3 in the end. Ends represent CH3s and all joints represent CH2s. So this is the, the bond line notation for this compound. What is the next compound now? NC. Uh, let me just step out for you to take a picture. So the next compound now is N triple bond C, that is there are two cyano groups, CH, OH, C and triple bond N. And you're supposed to write down the condensed formula for this. So you will have, you know, to this CH if you see, this is the central carbon. So to this C, you have OH attached, right? And you have CN or I could put the C triple bond. C triple bond N is twice. So you can write it this way and OH is attached to this. So this is the condensed formula. Yes, OH, C triple bond N. Now, in order to condense it further, we can remove the bond. So you'll write OH, C, CN, hold twice. Now, you're eliminating all bonds, assuming that the person who is, uh, who is reading it knows the valencies and knows how many bonds are there and where would they be. Then comes the pictorial, that is the bond line notation. In bond line notation, again, we can write the, for the carbon, we just put this dot here. The C is here and CN. C, N, and O, H, right? For O, H, I think it's a better idea to write H, O, because it's not hydrogen which is attached to the carbon, it's oxygen. So, although we, for convenience, we do write O, H, because it's the alcoholic group, but since it is oxygen which is attaching itself, therefore it's better to write O, H. So you have OH, this is a carbon, you have OH attached to one end, you have CN and you have CN in a triangular planar structure. You would make this. So this was the bond line notation. Now we do the next question. Give me a moment to write it down. Now this is question 12.6. Bond line notations have been given to you and you have to expand it into the, uh, to show all the atoms, that is to give the complete structure. Expand each of the following bond line formulas to show all the atoms including carbon and hydrogen. So this is these are four compounds given to us. We have to expand them writing every atom that is there in the molecule. So let's start with A. What's the structure like? So wherever there is a joint, we'll be putting a carbon. So there is a hexagon. So we'll be making a hexagon with carbons. Carbon, 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 carbon. So make a hexagon. Now, after this, you have, you're ba basically making the skeletal structure first. Then you have carbon here, and the tips, you know, are 
methyl groups. So there is carbon and carbon at the tip. Ends always mean a methyl group. So now you have carbon, carbon here. So you've basically made the carbon structure. Now fill up all valencies. Every carbon should form four bonds. So you will count the number of bonds it is already forming and fill the rest up with hydrogens. So there are two bonds that each carbon is forming here in order to complete the tetravalency it needs two more bonds so it has it combines with two more hydrogens so every carbon you will show with two hydrogens each carbon with two hydrogens right hydrogen 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 and hydrogen and look at this carbon this has three bonds already so it should be the fourth bond should be a hydrogen. There should be no uh, fifth bond. It will have only one hydrogen because it is already forming three bonds. It needs only one hydrogen. Similarly, this carbon needs only one hydrogen because it's already forming three bonds, needs one more. And these carbons will be three hydrogens each. Hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen. So that forms the structure, the first molecule. The second molecule is, let's write B here now, uh, it forms how many mountains? Three. So three peaks, one, two, three, and the fourth goes like this. So the ends are methyl groups. So we write CH3 here. So I could, you know, actually CH3 here, a carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, and a carbon here. So this would also be a CH3. So two bonds already, so this will be a CH2, two bonds already. So two, 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 and two. Do you see? Just by knowing how many uh, bonds is the, every joint is a carbon, and how many bonds is it already forming, fill up, make it up to four by adding those many hydrogens. Now we can make the individual bonds. So this carbon here forms three bonds with three hydrogens hydrogen and hydrogen and it combines with here you have carbon and you know actually when you are expanding this you don't really have to write it in this way you can simply write it as a straight molecule so let's do that so now this carbon is c h h and h so the next is c this is the third carbon fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon, seventh carbon, and eighth carbon. Do you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbons. Now fill it up. Hydrogens. Each carbon forming four bonds. When you're writing down all the bonds, it becomes easier to write it this way because you count four bonds on all four sides. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen and this carbon forms only one bond so it should form bonds with three other hydrogens right so this is the expanded form of the second compound come to the third compound now there's a triple bond and then there is a single bond then a bond comes down here and these two open up this way so this should be a carbon here there should be a carbon here every joint now, when you're joining three bonds with a single bond, they'll just show it like that, three, and then further is a single bond. Again, that's a joint. So there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, and the two corners are carbons too, right? Now we'll start filling up three bonds are already formed. So one would be hydrogen. This is already forming four bonds, three on this side and one on this side, so no other atom here. Forming two bonds, so there should be a CH2. This is forming three bonds. See, one, two, three, so there should be only one hydrogen. And this should be is terminal, so it is H3 and this is H3. Do you get this? Now we've located how many carbons and how many hydrogens would be there. Now let us write down the expanded formula. You have C in a straight line. So you have CH triple bond C, then C sorry. Uh -uh. CH H CH2, then C H and C h3 and this carbon has another ch3 attached to it so you have a c here h h and h here so do you get this this is the third compound the fourth compound now is this way so these two are carbons 
this is carbon, this is carbon, this is carbon, this is carbon. So this will be H3, the corner ones will be H3s. And look at this, this is forming three bonds, so there will be only one hydrogen, three bonds, so only one hydrogen. Let us write this down now. If we have to make a straight line, let us show these two as branches and this to be the straight line of the compound. It will be a form of butane with two methyl groups attached to it. So the expanded form would be C, H, H, H. Then you have C, H and C, H, H and H, CH3 as a branch. Then you have C, H here and C, H, H and H here. That's a second branch. And then you have C, H, H and H. So do you see how we expanded the entire compound? All you do is now we took this, this as the main chain. And these two were the branches coming out from the second carbon and the third carbon and that is how we represented it when we expanded the formula. So with this I think the subtopic uh, structural representation of organic compounds I close this and I hope you found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you understood it and, and if you liked it of course and uh, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep coming back for more and more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.